Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to chapter or module three in the uh, in the course of uh, hotel and resort management. I hope everyone is uh, enjoying the course so far. And al as always, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Before uh, we dive into the lecture portion of the course this week, just wanted to take care of a couple of housekeeping uh, items really quick. Uh, first things first. If there's ever an assignment with a video or a lecture such as this one, uh, I really appreciate all the students sending in uh, screenshots that they completed it or writing me an email saying that they completed the assignment. Uh, thank you so much for going above and beyond. I truly appreciate that. Moving forward, all that is needed in the assignment box after watching a video or visiting a website that I may post is just a simple complete statement. Uh, we go by the honor system here. I will be using some of the content that I post in homework or uh, test questions. So uh, again, we're going to go by the honor system, but please just make sure that we're submitting a sub, uh, complete statement in the uh, assignment submission box. That will be sufficient. No need for screenshots or emails or anything like that, but I do appreciate them. Thank you very much. Uh, second item of housekeeping internally for the course that I wanted to uh, take care of, no pun intended. Discussion questions, just please make sure that you are making your initial discussion post and then responding to two of your classmates. Uh, there seemed to be some uh, confusion with that in some of the first initial posts, so just please make sure that you are responding to at least two of your classmates so that we have some really good discussions on the topics involved in the course. Uh, beyond that, let's go ahead and get into chapter three in the book, which is a critical chapter, more ways than one. It's a relatively short chapter, but I think personally, as a uh, as a resort operator and somebody who's studying resort management, it is one of the most critical chapters in the book. Also, I want to remind everyone that uh, this book is, is is was written in two thousand eight, and it's obviously pre pandemic. But I really want to stress throughout this lecture, please keep COVID-19 and the impact on the hospitality and travel industry in mind when we are moving through this chapter. The reason I say that is our midterm is going to be a, uh, a, a written midterm exam. And one of the topics is going to be chapter three and how COVID-19 impacted the hospitality, tourism, and resort industry. So just as you move through this chapter, please keep the impacts of COVID-19 in the back of your mind and think of those ways how uh, the industry has adjusted and survived in some cases and not survived in others. So uh, the first section I want to talk about in chapter three is the uh, health and wellness portion. Uh, as a society here in the United States and globally, there is more of a focus uh, focus on health and wellness, uh, well-being, taking time off. You see a lot of companies, even pre-pandemic and definitely post-pandemic, uh, saying to push employees to use their their time off, their vacation time. Now, whether a company actually follows through with it is a, is a debate for another course at another time. But you do see more focus on work-life balance and using things such as holidays, vacation time, and PTO. Now, whether that's driven by the company or by the employees, again, uh, is, a, uh, is another topic for another time, but you do see more focus on health and wellness. And one of the ways health and wellness is promoted is to travel, relaxation, uh, trying new experiences. So you see a lot of these resort segments fighting for their piece of that market share whether it be a uh, destination beach resort, all-inclusive in the Caribbean, maybe taking that once-in-a-lifetime ski trip, or uh, you know going to Walt Disney World, as we like to bring up so often in this course, Vegas, uh, an international destination, you name it. You see a lot of companies and resorts fighting for that market segmentation of that health and wellness and that work-life balance. So with more and more people encouraged one way or the other, whether it be by their employer or by their friends and family, their significant others, things like that, to take their time off and use that time off, travel seems to be one of the first uh, items besides relaxation uh, for ideas and ways to use that time off. Uh, again, a lot of this um, academic research and uh, commentary is coming from the 
pre-COVID-19 side of things. But as we start to see uh, more and more things normalize, hopefully here in the United States and around the world with uh, more rollouts of, uh, of vaccines and protections, we want to keep in mind that those resorts that were impacted, those travel destinations were impacted, hopefully eventually have the plan of opening back up. Uh, another topic that comes up in the book and I want to discuss is before the pandemic, there was a lot of focus on the topic of an emerging middle class, especially in other countries. China, for instance, is a great example of having a growing number of middle class citizens that are traveling more. Uh, you see that also in Korea, the Philippines. Uh, the United States has been known traditionally for uh, a growing middle class. There's some debate about that, whether it, that's continuing or not. But for the purposes of this discussion, uh, think of your, your, your middle class taking that once in a lifetime or once every five years uh, family or uh, you know couple's vacation to travel to a resort or destination of their choice and uh, you know thinking from the lines of this we're talking about working class individuals or individuals who can't uh, spend millions of dollars and go on eight dream vacations per per year we're talking about the people that save up their money and hopefully get the chance to travel to a destination of their choice and how companies uh, fight and recruit and market to uh, those segments of the population, how you, uh, how you market your message and how you market your resort to uh, an emerging middle class or, or, or working class is going to be different than some other uh, uh, types of market segments that you would be marketing to. Uh, one of the big things that I'm passionate about that the, uh, the, that the author touches on, but we're going to touch on a little bit more in this course, is environmental awareness. You are seeing a heavy, heavy social responsibility movement in the hospitality and tourism industry, whether it's recycling, using less energy, uh, the environmental impact on the area. Several World Heritage Sites now have restrictions on the amount of building and the amount of visitors that can use a site. You're seeing this impact uh, the cruise industry uh, as far as not being able to dump waste or trash uh, like they used to. And so you're seeing a more social aspect, uh, social responsibility aspect in the hospitality industry. Uh, every resort is now promoting, uh, whether they're part of a green resort program, uh, their initiatives on recycling or using less energy, electric vehicles, all kinds of uh, ways that they are trying to impact the environment less. Uh, it's always uh, a good idea to watch out for greenwashing in this case. If you're not familiar with greenwashing, it is promoting a, uh, a sustainable or a green lifestyle or way of doing business, but not actually following through. So uh, I do know a lot of consumers that are really, really heavily vested in making sure that they do business with, uh, you know, destinations or resorts that actually follow through with their environmental awareness and don't just use it as a talking point, which unfortunately a lot of businesses do. There is a link in the course if you haven't watched it already. It is a, uh, a charity and an organization that I have worked with personally myself with, uh, with Walt Disney World. When I worked there and when I was a resort manager, it is called Clean the World. Uh, please make sure to visit their website and uh, watch the video. It's a pretty short video, less than four minutes, I think. But uh, this is truly uh, a great organization, number one. And number two, really sheds the light on some environmental awareness that is happening in communities. Uh, the uh, video and um, resources that are on their website show two places that uh, I, I'm heavily involved with. And when people think of resort management, probably one of the two places that come to mind immediately, and that is Las Vegas and Orlando. Uh, Clean the World is heavily involved in both of those communities. And what this organization does is it takes donated uh, supplies from hotels, soap, shampoos, things of that nature, uses them, recycles them, sanitizes them, of course, and then makes hygiene kits and showers available for uh, homeless populations and other populations that may be hygiene deprived. 
So again, uh, an organization that is doing great work, shows great partnership between the hospitality industry, uh, environmental awareness, and the community. So uh, again, just please uh, visit that website, take a look, because I want you all to be exposed to uh, organizations that are doing great community work and bringing environmental and social awareness to their communities at no cost. So uh, please just make sure that you visit that site. Uh, last topic in the book that I wanted to uh, talk about in this lecture is the realm of internet marketing. We have seen an explosion of this over the last uh, 10 to 15 years or so. Uh, not just talking about your, your discount or three-star hotels and resorts, your kayaks or your travel.com, hotel.com, Travago. Uh, there's a million of them that you can list you know, started out with the consumer just looking for the cheapest hotel room for the night, but you are also starting to see more uh, destination resorts marketing on Instagram, TikTok, uh, all over the place. You're starting to see an actual, you know, influencers um, giving their opinions, staying at these resorts. Uh, Greece is heavily known for this, uh, bringing over social media influ influencers and stars to stay at their resorts and tell their massive following about how great it is. So internet marketing has gone from, hey, just putting our contact information on a website and letting the consumer reach out to us to broadcasting that message uh, via several different mediums out to the consumer for them to uh, to make their choices. So uh, paying attention to how a resort markets itself and to who it is marketing to is, is um, really something that needs to be examined and something that you should be familiar with. Uh, case studies in this chapter, we're gonna be taking a look at the, uh, predominantly the cruise industry. Uh, one of the questions on the homework that I have for you is uh, a big debate in the hospitality field. I don't know why it's a debate. Uh, maybe for uh, people to justify having uh, jobs in certain areas. I don't know why, but it's always been a debate in the hospitality industry whether cruise ships are considered resorts or not. I personally